Okay. All right, I'm gonna get started. So, <clears throat> welcome back. This is our second meeting. Just so y'all know, oh, one more person. Just so y'all know, this is being recorded. Again, meetings will be recorded all the time and posted on our, oh, hold on, someone said something. Oh, yes. Please sign in with your first name, last name, ABC123, and your banner ID. And then Lainey is going to keep track of that so y'all can get y'all's credit. Um, but the meetings will be recorded, so if you don't want to show your face, that's fine. You can turn your camera off. Either way, it doesn't show you because I'm recording my screen, so you don't have to really worry about that. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so once again, the membership requirements, you have to attend three out of six meetings. So I know I got a few messages worried because y'all didn't make the first meeting or aren't able to make this meeting. Um, that's okay, we still have four meetings left. So just make sure you attend the three out of six. And if you aren't able to attend the rest for whatever reason, uh, school or work, just send me a message and then we can set you up for alternative membership. Uh, membership dues are $15 for returning, so make sure that you verify that with Fernando, and then $20 for new members. Those are due October 27th. Then you have to uh, attain 10 volunteer credits, so one hour equals one credit, and only five outside credits will be accepted. We do require proof, so I will get more into detail with that once we cover the opportunities that we have for y'all. Um, you can also donate $6, which will equal one credit with a max of $30. And then attend one event. They are going to be virtual. So we have the Speed Networking event and the Mental Health Conference with Active Minds. So they're hosting and we're just going to participate one day. And then uh, make sure to follow us on our social media, writing link, and subscribe to YouTube. On YouTube, we will be posting, again, the videos. I did create a video um, with instructions on how to request credits on RideyLink, that will be posted on there as well. So just make sure you're checking that. I do post important information. And then all requirements are due November 10th. Now with dues, if y'all are struggling like to pay that, please send me a message and we can work out a payment plan. And this meeting is going to be dedicated to discussing opportunities and assistance for people that are having financial hardship. Okay, so here are the alternative membership requirements. So dues are 25. Um, you do have to pay those by October 27th. If you're struggling, send me a message and I will work with you. And then attain 15 volunteer credits with same thing, max of five outside credits, so five donations, $6 equals one credit, and then you have to attend one virtual meeting and everything is due on November 10th for that as well. So here are our opportunities. Um, we have the letters of encouragement for SASH and the children's shelter, so one letter equals one credit. You, for that, all you have to do is take a picture of the letter, the drawing with yourself and send that to us via email. Once we confirm that, then you would go on ReadyLink and request those credits. And when we confirm with you, we will tell you how many credits to request. Uh, for Seven Cups, you it's an application, so you would download that, and you do have to get training. It doesn't take long, it's about 30 minutes. I am offering one credit for the training, so once you complete the training, it should give you like a congratulations banner. You'll take a screenshot of that, send it in as well for proof, and we will email you saying, okay, request one hour or one credit on ReadyLink. Um, but this thing is really great. You know, you can sign up to be uh, just a member, so someone that needs to talk to someone, someone that needs the help, and then you can sign up to be a listener. We're only going to give credit for being a listener, so a volunteer. Um, you really just provide that comfort for people that are going through struggles, and it has everything, mental health, financial, like, you know, um, struggles, people that are just struggling with any little thing in general, 
So it's, it's a really great way to help out people. And again, it's by hour. So this one, you'll just take a screenshot of the chat. So it should tell you what time the first message was sent and what time the last message was sent. If you want to just black out the actual typing, then just black that out. But I want to see the times as well as the names. Um, it is anonymous, so people, the people that are signing up to be members to get help won't usually put their real name. So it's going to stay anonymous. You don't have to worry about that. Um, if you still don't feel comfortable, then just send me the screenshot of the times. But I do need that to give you credit. Um, same thing, you'll email that or you can DM it. And once we confirm, then that's how many credits you will request on Rylink. So the Be My Eyes, it's also an application. With this one, um, it doesn't actually tell you how long you were on there. So with this one, what I'm going to do is you're just going to go on and do it. Once you're done helping the person out, it should say thank you or, you know, I think you should just say thank you. You'll just take a screenshot of that and send it in as well. Um, and we will tell you, okay, great one credit. Uh, but this one is an application that you will download and you are helping out people that um, are either blind or low vision. So it can be things like uh, picking out a shirt, what different colors. They're like, okay, which one is the red shirt? So you'll just tell them, you'll give directions. Oh, it's the one in the middle and stuff like that. So it's very simple and it's also a great way to help people out. Okay, and then we have two more. So the encouragement videos for In Between Living Rehabilitation. Um, In Between Living Rehabilitation is a nonprofit organization and they wanted to create or wanted people to create videos to create a video campaign called More Than One Odd. Uh, and these videos, it's three to five minutes long. So I will be giving y'all two credits for that. But you just want to record simple things like um, you know, some cool skills, some DIY things, um, some fun facts, stuff that you do, some chores. It's honestly whatever you want. Um, and the point of this is so that people don't feel alone. So they're going to combine all of these videos and just create a huge campaign. Um, just be aware that these will be posted on their YouTube and their social media and on Roku channel. So if you don't feel comfortable, with your video being out there, then don't do this one. Um, we will also be posting it. So if you don't feel comfortable, then don't send that in. Uh, and also with all the volunteer opportunities, we are going to, when you send them the, the proof, we're going to combine all of those and create a nice little video at the end of the semester. So if you don't feel comfortable with us sharing the pictures you send for proof, just make sure that you comment, you like say it in the email or in the DM, however you send it and make it very clear that you do not want us to share your pictures um, and we won't share them. Otherwise, we will share them. But for this one, if you do decide to do it, again, two credits, three to five minutes long, you'll email the video to dynasty at atkinsstaffingagency.org and make sure to cc studentsidequtsa at gmail.com. So the last one we have is love for the elderly. So it's similar to the SASH and Children's Shelter. It's just a letter of encouragement. Um, and it's honestly so that they don't feel alone and they have something to entertain themselves. And for the mailing addresses, you can just look up the things and then it should give you the, the address that you would mail it to. Okay, so... Instructions for Rowdy Link. I know a lot of people were struggling with this and I was getting um, a lot of questions on how to request credits. I did create a video. I sent it on the group chat. Again, I will also be posting that on YouTube, but it's, it's quite simple. Um, so you go to Rowdy Link and then once you're on the home page, it shows your icon on the type right corner. Then you're going to press that and it gives you a list of different things. So I believe it's towards the bottom. It says service hours. You're just going to press that and they should bring you to the, the 
main page for service hours, you're going to click at the top. Uh, it's on the right, add service hours. So once you press that, it should give you a list of descriptions. You're just going to press your organization, so student psych, association, and then in the description, you want to make sure you're very detailed. Um, and again, you have to submit proof first before going to RadioLink. And the person that sends you the approval message, that's who you're going to put for the verification contact. Again, I did record a video. It will be posted on YouTube. I sent it in the group chat. So if you are still unsure, just check those, um, the, the video that I made, and hopefully that answers some questions for you. And our social media. So I've been saying GroupMe. GroupMe is very important. That's where we share a lot of information through and Rowdy Link. So if this is the QR code. If you aren't on it already, please join. It's very important for you to join on there and Rowdy Link. So um, just a quick side note with Rowdy Link. We send reminder emails and recap emails, but I know a lot of people have not been receiving those. Um, so Rowdy Link is glitching. So what I suggest you do is unjoin and then rejoin. And hopefully that solves that issue. If not, um, I'm, I'm really not sure what else to do. I did message them. I have not heard back. So they're not very good at communicating. Um, but that's really all I can suggest for now. I will try and continue contacting them and hopefully they can give me an answer. So... Also our Instagram, we post a lot of things on there. Uh, Vanessa is our social media person and she actually did Fun Fact Friday and Trivia Tuesday. So those are really fun. You can check those out. So this is our handle, Student Psych UTSA. Then we also have our Twitter, which is just Psych UTSA. And then our Facebook, we're not that active on Facebook, but we will try to be. And then again, writing link is the important one. And this is our email right here. So this is where you'll be sending in all that proof or you can just send it through DM. Oh. And then our YouTube. Our YouTube is also important. We are posting everything on there. So you can just review on there. All right, so these are our meeting dates. We have two down. We have September 29th left, October 13th, the 27th, November 10th, and on the 24th is our last one. So when we say three out of six meetings, we're only counting these. The November 24th one, we don't count because that one's just a goodbye celebration. Um, so if you want to acquire those, the active membership, make sure to attend three of these meetings or more, you can attend more. Three is the minimum. Okay, so our merch. We have our t-shirts. Um, I also created a PowerPoint and sent this on the group chat, but I wanted to share it on here as well, just in case y'all didn't see this. So when you are ordering, we are going to do through codes. It just makes it easier for everybody. So the code for the t-shirts are T. It's just a T and you just put what size you want. So TL is a t-shirt size large, medium, small. We only have one extra small available. So if you want that one, I suggest you order it right away. These are $20. If you are in San Antonio, I will meet with you in person and hand that off. If you're not in San Antonio and it needs to be delivered, you will be charged a shipping fee depending on how far um, I have to deliver it to. So we also have double-sided masks, which are $7.00 each and they are you know they're really cool they have like these little stamps and the order code for this one is an m and they're all one size okay we also have tumblers water bottles and coffee mugs so here are the letter codes for that tumblers are a those are 15 dollars. water bottles are c also 15 dollars. coffee mugs are b and those are $20. If you want any personalization, it would be an extra $3. And these are the designs we have for now. Um, maybe we'll get more. I don't want to make promises. But for now, these are the only designs we have. So uh, the orange one is code one. 
the navy blue is code two and the light blue is code three. Okay, and then these are the tumblers with all three designs. Um, so again, the tumblers are A, and then the, this is the design number three. So I just wanted to be very clear on how to order these. I So hopefully this helps out. This will be posted on YouTube and also sent through the recap and will be posted on the group chat. So you can just review this. I don't want to spend too much time on this. Um, same thing here, are the ones for the water bottles, and we have colors white, blue, black, pink, and red. And then these are our coffee mugs. For our coffee mugs, we only have seven left. So if you want those, order those soon. And these are $20. Okay, and then this is our Venmo and our Cash App. So you will just be sending your payments there. And in the memos, just be very clear as to what you want. So if you're paying membership dues, just put membership dues and in parentheses put new or returning and then uh, whatever code of the items it is that you are ordering. So lastly, once you've sent the payment, um, Fernando is our treasurer or I, uh, Debbie will DM you with the receipt and confirmation of your order and then we will ask for delivery information. Okay, and then our next meeting is on September 29, 2020 at 6 p.m. And I forgot to put the flyer, but I will send that out on the GroupMe. I apologize. Okay, so as I said, our officers will be presenting. Only five will be presenting today, and then the other five will be presenting on September 29th. So the September 29th meeting will also be a continuation of financial assistance options. Um, so this is the order first. I'll be first, then Lauren, then Elena, then Destiny, and then Ethan. So give me one second. Let me pull mine up. Okay. And we weren't able to merge them all because it changed. Um, the designs, so I'm going to have to do this for all of them. So just bear with me. Okay, so I am presenting over um, NHSD, San Antonio, so Neighborhood and Housing Services Department. So what do they do? They provide emergency rent and mortgage assistance. Uh, this is your link. Uh, the link just sends you to the general main page. But um, they, it does say on here to schedule an appointment and, you know, later on it will tell you that you have to meet in person to provide documents. But I called them and they actually told me that they are doing things through the phone to make it easier for people so you don't actually have to go in person if you don't want to. But make sure to call to schedule an appointment if you do want to go in person. Oh skip to the end okay so what is their mission the nhsd is dedicated to supporting and and enhancing the quality of life for residents of san antonio by providing effective management and delivery of our city's resources for a vibrant future and their vision our vision is to create stable and diverse neighborhoods where individuals can thrive <clears throat> we strengthen families and reinvigorate communities through the delivery of programs focused on housing, economic stimulation, reinvestment, rehabilitation, and supportive funding for public services. So I provided a different link right here. This one will take you straight to the page for emergency assistance. Um, and then if you do cl click the first link, just make sure that you go to the Neighborhood and Housing Services Department, then to programs, then Fair Housing slash COVID-19 Emergency Assistance Program. So on here, it, I wasn't able to get the whole screen, but lower, it tells you all the documents you would need. And then there's also a link right here that you would press on that web page with the list of documents that you would need to provide. So that way you can prepare those in advance. So are you eligible? 
their only requirements are that you live in Bear County and that you have proof of financial hardship. So if you lost hours or you lost your job, um, and even if you don't have that, simply showing that you have an overdue rent statement or mortgage, you can provide that and they will help you. Uh, let's just go back. So on here, if you aren't in Bear County, they do provide another link that you would just press and those are rental assistance for people that aren't um, in Barry County. So you can look at the different services that they have. Um, and you do not require a social security. So I know that people have been struggling with that because um, they're scared of getting assistance or asking for assistance because they aren't citizens. Well, you can still ask. You will not be penalized. You will not get in trouble. Uh, immigration will not intervene whatsoever. So this will not affect you in any way. If you need help, ask for help. Okay, um, it's not letting me go forward. Okay, okay so the process, you would just uh, provide your information. So if they sent you an eviction notice, which they shouldn't because no one is allowed to evict anybody until the end of 2020, and I'm sure they will extend that. So um, if they also send you a notice that your mortgage or rent is late, you'll just take a screenshot of that, or you can also just take a screenshot of um, your upcoming rent or mortgage. And so documentations showing household hardships. So if you lost some hours or if you lost your job or simply that you're struggling because you have children in the house that aren't going to school anymore and aren't being fed through the school. So any little thing, it, it will help you. It will accept you. And then um, this is the address where you supposedly have to send it, but again, when you apply, someone will send you a message and then from there you can do everything virtually. So you won't actually have to see them in person. So on here it says intake appointment date and time. Again, you don't actually have to go in person if you don't feel comfortable. You can do everything online. And then they will tell you afterwards if you, uh, you know, how much you received, if you did receive anything and just know that the whole process does take about one month so they said that getting all the information because they also have to know like um they also have to communicate with your employer or your previous employer as well as your landlord or the mortgage company so since they have to talk to several people it does take a little bit longer but while you're in the process of this the mortgage company or uh, your landlord aren't allowed to penalize you in any way whatsoever so just make sure that as soon as you apply you take a screenshot of the confirmation and send that out to the mortgage company or to your landlord so once you've been confirmed uh, it takes about two weeks for you to actually or well for your landlord or the company to receive the payment. So they won't actually send you the money directly. They will send it to the landlord or mortgage company, but they will send you an email notifying you of how much you received. And from there, you will forward that to uh, whoever it is that's charging you. Uh, and then they can refund you the money if you have any to be refunded. So if you still don't know what I'm saying, I did provide a little video here. Um, and I'm going to like, I'm going to put it really fast because I do have other officers presenting and I don't want to take up their time. So I'm sorry if it's too fast. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay, so. 
And you know what? I actually have it pulled up so I could show y'all. Um, again, this will be posted, so if you do want to look over it, you can just uh, do that. But let me show y'all the um, thing. Okay. So I have it right here. Okay, so this is what it'll look like. You just want to put English and then what kind of assistance you want. Um, and then right here, you'll put what you need. Okay, this isn't the one I had before. But, yeah. So it's not this one, but when you uh, fill it out, it should just ask you for basic information like um, your income, your household, who else helps you pay bills, um, if you have a social, but you're not required to put that if you don't want to. And yeah, it's pretty simple. If y'all do have questions, y'all can just refer back to the PowerPoint or you can ask me. I did talk to several people to try and get as much information for y'all as possible. Um, but let me pull up the next person. So next we have Lauren. Hey guys. Let me pull it up. I'm sorry. Give me one second. Okay. Okay. And Lauren, just tell me whenever you want me to, um, to go to the next page. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, so basically my talk isn't necessarily about like an organization. It's just like tips and tricks on like how like college kids can like save money. You can go to the next one. The best part is there are no requirements. These are just a lot of like easy things that you can do to kind of save money. Yeah, you can go to the next one. All right. So buy used textbooks. So I, my freshman year, I spent so much money on like the campus bookstore on their books. And I was like, this is absolutely ridiculous. And so I went on Amazon and they had so many used books and it saved like 75% of my money. It was like insane. So definitely do that. Um, learn how to like cook your own meals. Like it saves so much money from not eating out all the time. Um, you can also limit the amount of times you go out to eat. And if you do go out to eat, like go to like happy hour or stuff like that. Ways that like you'll get cheaper food out of it. Um, make coffee at home. Um, I know that's like a lot of college kids drink money and the average person spends about a thousand dollars on coffee throughout the year um but if you make your coffee at home it'll only cost you about a hundred dollars so i mean that's like nine hundred dollars you just saved right there um also you can use like your student discounts like i know some like like car places there's a car place off of um De Zavala. they give a student discount if something goes wrong with your car or something like that so just like your student discount can get you a lot. You just, like, have to make sure, like, that you ask for it. And something else is you could go to the rec. A lot of people spend uh, money on gym memberships, and that costs around $700 a year. And you are already paying for the rec um, in your tuition, so you might as well use it because you're already paying for it. So why pay for two memberships when you're only going to one? So go to the rec. That's a lot easier. Um, carpool whenever possible. You pick a name out of a hat, whoever. The same area. Um, split memberships with funds. This is a huge one that I personally use. Um, so like for Hulu, for example, um, some of my best friends and I, we split that Hulu account. So we just pay that person every month like five bucks instead of paying like $20 every month yourself for one membership. You can just split it between friends and all you guys can make the same account, which is like super great. Um, create a budget. So like have like um, how much rent is, how much your average groceries are, the occasional going out, like how much gas will cost. So create a budget every month and stick to it. Don't go over, don't go, just like stick to it because that is like the biggest thing. Um, also, make sure you pay your bills on time because I know like a ton of people will get like late fees and stuff like that. So try to set up like automatic payments because that can be a great way to like not miss uh, payments and stuff and like get charged for late fees. Um, and then stick to a debit card. So this is one that I learned personally. Um, 
I have a credit card and I only, you have to spend so much every month on mine. So what I did, it was I hooked up my Hulu account to that credit card and set up automatic payments. And I only use it for that and only use my debit card for groceries, rent, everything else is just on my debit card. So I'm not charging myself more on my credit card. So where I'm having to pay more every month on my credit card. So I know how much I'm spending with my debit card and I'm only using the money that I have instead of just going over. Um, and only like credit cards are great because in case you have an emergency situation, like you could always use that as like a backup plan. And it's also a great way to build credit. So I, those are just some simple ways that you can save money. So I would definitely check those out. That's it. Okay, next we have Elena. So let me pull hers up. Okay. Can y'all see it? Okay. Yes, I can see. Oh. Um, oh, no, I can't anymore. It just closed on me. So give me one second. <laughs> Okay, so let me just share it. Oh, sorry. Okay, there you go. Okay, cool. Um, so I'll be talking about the San Antonio Food Bank and the Roadrunner Pantry. Um, you can change the slide. Um, first, I'd like to start off by saying that we often underestimate the prevalence of hunger in our society, and especially among us university students, I feel like we have so much going on in our worlds that we may take something like food for granted. Um, for some people, food is a luxury, unfortunately. So if you are struggling with food insecurity, please remember that you are not alone and that we want to do what we can to help. And to demonstrate that, I've collected some statistics from the San Antonio Food Bank website, and I think they reveal how prevalent food insecurity still is in our society, and even like on a local basis in our city and local counties um, near UTSA. So I won't read out every statistic because I'm sure that you've been reading them as I've been talking, but um, I was pretty surprised by some of these. Um, especially by the one on the far right that states that 67% of food bank clients have incomes that fall below the federal poverty level. Um, so like I said, this slide is to reiterate that if you're struggling with obtaining food on a weekly basis, then you're certainly not alone. Um, next slide. Thankfully, the San Antonio Food Bank has created a very strong support system within the city that we can rely on. Um, some of their services include accepting donations, which I encourage everyone here to donate if that is something you're interested in, as well as providing a food bank for the city, having a fresh produce and farmer's market program, and mobilizing their pantry supply all over the city through mobile pantry trucks. And aside from these services, I will also be talking about the current COVID-19 response that they are running, as well as a UTSA food pantry. students. First, there's a COVID-19 response, like I said. At this time, the food bank is accepting and is in dire need of food donations. If you want to donate, I recommend checking out their website, um, which is just safoodbank.org. They accept both food and monetary donations, so there's always a way to help even if you're not physically donating food. I also read an interesting statistic on there, something like um, Donating one dollar can help feed up to uh, seven people. So it's really incredible how much just a little bit of money can go. And on the other end, if you are in dire need of emergency food supply, at this time they are opening emergency food distribution at the Tree of Life Church. And on this slide, I've provided the address for that venue as well as the date. So the nearest one is on Thursday, September 17th, 2020, which is very close. However, registration is still open and it is required if you want to participate in the services here. And there's a link at the bottom if you want more. 
information on that. Right, so the next slide, um, San Antonio Food Bank also provides these two really cool services that are related to acquiring fresh produce. I feel like when we think about food banks, we just think about like peanut butter and like a can of soup, but they actually have programs set up to help provide fresh produce to their clients. Um, there's of course a wide range of seasonal produce, which is really cool. Um, on their website, on either one of these links, you can check out what kind of food they provide. And they have a lot of staples like broccoli, cabbage, um, onions, carrots, tomatoes, and so on. Uh, but the cool thing about this produce is that it is often donated by commercial brands like HEB. And it's pretty much just quote unquote ugly produce and scuffed up. So this food is perfectly good, but it's just set aside by commercial companies because they don't want to put this on their shelves. But like I said, it's perfectly good food and it provides a nice source of produce for people in the city. Um, and if you wanna see if you're eligible for these benefits, and I recommend checking out the websites, I believe that the farmer's market program is a bit more exclusive. Um, however, the fresh produce program is a lot more open and you can often use things like coupon vouchers uh, in exchange for this produce. Um, then the next slide. There's also the mobile pantry, which this one I feel is very self-explanatory. Um, these pantry trucks travel around the city to various food bank facilities to distribute food. This also includes a supplemental food assistance for qualified families and individuals. The link is at the bottom as well, um, if you wanna check if you're eligible or not. And another cool statistic, they have lots of these on their website, is that each mobile pantry vehicle can provide 150 families with up to 50 pounds of food. So they have a very large carrying capacity and I think that they're always worth checking out. Um, then the next slide, this is the last service and I feel like this one is most relevant for us students. Oh, I see a question in the chat. That's a good question, but I'm not qualified to answer it. So I'll just keep talking. Um, I think that the service is really underrated because although we may hear about the Roadrunner Pantry, I don't really see a lot of people going there um, or utilizing this service. And I think it may be intimidating just like um, by its like name or premise. But if you're facing food insecurity in any way, shape, or form, you can visit the Roadrunner Pantry to pick up food with each visit. And like the slide says, um, it's located in the Student Union Building, or in that area, rather. It's next to the UPS store, if you know where that is. And the pantry itself runs from Monday to Friday from noon to 4 a.m. Um, I must note, though, that due to COVID, you can only visit once a week just due to social distancing rules. So keep that in mind. Um, however, if you do go, you can pick up food and I think it's worth hanging on to this information just in case. And on the next slide, I'll be talking about a few like common concerns that people usually have with the Roadrunner Pantry. So these are the frequently asked questions. Thankfully, the pantry requires no appointment whatsoever and no special qualifications. So literally, we literally, sorry, I tripped over my words. Literally, anyone here can be eligible to use a service. Um, you just have to go to the physical site and location. Um, similarly, like I said before, you can visit once a week to pick up some food. It's unfortunate that there's a limitation right now, but it's because of COVID. And uh, even on a weekly basis, you can still get a decent amount of food for free. Finally, you can just pick up the food and leave, um, so they don't really ask much from you. But if you're interested, you can take a survey when you exit and provide a description of your experience, which helps them serve students in the future. And that link is at the bottom in case you wanna see any more details about this option. Then my last slide. Um, I feel like I talked about a lot, but in the end, I want to reiterate that you're not alone. And for some of these services, I know that it can be intimidating just going up and like accessing them. So for things like the Roadrunner Food Pantry, if you do want to check that out, but you're nervous about going alone, um, by all means, feel free to DM me on GroupMe. 
and we could possibly arrange like going together like I could walk with you to go there and we can check it out together um, because I know that going alone is scary so that's always an option and thank you for listening to me ramble thank you um, just to answer the question that was asked, yes, uh, we weren't offering that as a volunteer opportunity, but if y'all want to donate to the food pantry or to the UTSA pantry, um, just six items equals one credit. So we'll definitely do that. And next we have Destiny. Give me one second. What's up, baby? <laughs> okay. So, cool. Hold on, this isn't yours, my bad. Oh. <laughs> that one's... Hey, that's a good presentation. I don't know what you're saying. Right? <laughs> Ew, is that Lauren's presentation? <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. Oh. Just kidding. Okay. Can y'all see it? Yes. Okay, let me just do the present. Oops. Okay. Cool. So I did my presentation on the SAM Ministries and the services that they have. Um, they basically have, if you need help with rent or utility or anything else, so like kind of similar to how they help with the meals, you know, they help with um, also support services so they help you build your resume how to actually apply for a job um they're real supportive in that way and to be eligible basically it's going to be if you have a current eviction notice uh or disconnection notice for your utilities um if you're part of a low income family and you also must show proof of a stable income that you're at least trying to get back on your feet you know And basically they have a program, it's called TLLC. It's the Transitional Housing and Learning Center. And they provide housing and resources. So it's a parent and a minor child who qualify. And here what they do is they help, like I said, by meeting or yeah, by working or attending school for at least 30 hours a week. Um, and they also have case managers there to discuss your goals, to make sure you're kind of going to the direction to be more stable and be, you know, able to afford things. Um, and then the life skills classes, that's kind of a part of it, what they do, which is like money management, conflict resolution, parenting classes, anything of that nature, just, you know, preparing you and the main focus is to improve your health mentally physically emotionally socially and help the well-beings of families living there at the housing center and also it's similar to the housing center i just suggested but this one has to do with veterans you know because I know a lot of times the veterans coming back from war have a difficulty associating, like reintegrating into their civilian lives due to shell shock or even drug addictions as their coping mechanisms. So this really helps them get back on their feet as well. And in order to contact them, here's all their contact info. Their website is just samm.org. You go to their website, click help. And then the United Way helpline is kind of what they're having people go to just because there's so many applicants, you know, so they're trying to suggest that number. They've been getting 55, they only take 55 requests a week for rental assistance. Um, and then the long-term housing assistance, that's, for you to be there two years or longer, and that's the number you can call if you need assistance with that. And also utility support. You know, they can help you pay your bill on the utility, stuff like that. Um, but they also do suggest that 211 number again, since everything's filling up super fast. So 
Thank you. If you have any more questions, you can just text me or go to the website and I'll be more than happy to help. Okay, and then lastly, we have Ethan. Okay. All right. Uh, so my um, financial assistance is uh, Christian Assistance Ministry, CAM for short. So their mission is to share the love of Christ by providing immediate assistance and encouragement to people in crisis. Uh, it's like a triage or emergency room. You can come to CAM uh, in all sorts of crisis, no appointments necessary, and all are welcome. So it does say Christian, but um, it, it all are welcome. So you don't, you can be on uh i forgot you, you could be any religion in a sense or believe in nothing um they provide many items to meet the client's immediate physical needs cam is a vital connection for clients who need long-term support by providing referrals and advocating for client to other nonprofits or government agencies open to all that are in need what do they provide or what do they do they provide food clothing showers utility assistance prescription assistance id recovery <clears throat> a free place to receive mail and transportation to medical appointments or bus passes for newly employed so the requirements for this, um, like I said, you don't need an appointment, you just go, but you have to provide a photo ID. This can be a driver's license, a school ID, um, or even an expired ID. Uh, your social security card, proof of red residency for if you want to get groceries, so it can be like a utility bill or a lease agreement or a SSI award letter or a food stamp notification letter. So several op options. Um, the financial assistance requires the paperwork for that need. So if it is for like a prescription for medicine, it will need like um, the prescription from the doctor saying you need to get um, X, X prescription, what, whichever one it is. Um, and you can call that phone number. Uh, it's the downtown phone number or the nor north side, just for, I guess, more clarification for the financial assistance. And you can also visit, visit that link down below for a shorter wait time. It's an application and it just asks more about you and uh, what you are looking for and it helps them out when you just bring it to them when you come on site and they can help you out sooner. So I just provide the downtown location for uh, more clarification and if you want to know where they were. <coughs> uh, Days of Bala actually is really close to UTSA so um, there's that. Uh, it is Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. Oh, I messed up on the first one, but 10 a.m. through 1 p.m. for both of the locations. And um, there's also right after they are helping those that are homeless. Okay, so that was our last presentation. Um, if y'all do have questions, now is your time to ask about anything. Um, does anybody have any questions, comments?
Okay, well, this was recorded, so um, I will post this on YouTube, and then we will send it through the emails, and I will also try and post it on the group chat. Um, that way y'all can just go over it, and if y'all just need a refresher and want to see everything we covered, I also have all the presentations that the officers did, so I will also send those out on the, or I'll have Elena send those out on the recap. And I will also send them on the group chat. So y'all can just go through those. And if y'all have questions for individual officers, you can just message them. And I'm sure like they'll all be happy to answer you. Uh, for the routing link, again, because I'm still receiving questions about that, uh, just, I guess, message me. Go over the video I sent. And I, I will be posting that everywhere. It should already be on the group chat. But um, hopefully that clarifies something for you. If not, I guess just ask me and I can help you out. You can also ask Ethan or Alexis or Lauren. Uh, I do have a question about the, um, the UTSA pension. How do you want us to track that? Or is there going to be an ability, uh, a, an ability for monetary donations and how you, I don't know, how you want to look at that? So um, to get that credit, is that what you're asking? Okay, yeah. so um, same thing that you, like the way you request credits for the other stuff, all you have to do is just take a picture. Um, I said six items equals one credit. So just send a picture of those items and email it to us or DM it and we will just send you a confirmation message 